folks, how are you? Welcome to Cardinal Bistro and Merry Christmas. Today we have a Christmas celebration and I have some wonderful guests here today helping me out in the kitchen. One of our students here at Case High is Missy and <laughs> Haley's back from the last time when she joined us and back by popular demand. <laughs> Nancy Raymond's back from the kitchen to help us, help us out today because she found out what I was cooking today, and she said, Karen, I gotta learn how to do some of this stuff. So, oh, you wanna come on, right, Nancy? The roast, yes. Yes, yes. the roast. We've oh. got some beautiful recipes today. Wanna teach you folks how to do one of my family's all-time faves, and it's a, a stuffed pork tenderloin. We're gonna be stuffing it with some baby spinach and some uh, nice, fresh-cut provolone from the deli. And then we're going to put some garlic inside of there, and then we're going to encase it with some prosciutto ham. So nice holiday roast. Maybe it's something you're thinking of. You want to do something a little different than the turkey or the ham. You know, break away from the little tradition on Christmas. Maybe even for your Christmas Eve party, you can slice that up with some nice fresh bread. I got some good ideas for you today, folks. So stick around. This is going to be one heck of a party. All right. So, um... I think we'll get started on the roast because the roast is going to take us the most time and um, I want to get it out of the way and move it, okay, because I'm going to be working with some raw meat here today. So we have one, it's small, we're going to feed about, if you're really hungry, maybe about six people on this, but I can get ten good slices out of one pork tenderloin. And what I've done is I butterflied it right down the middle, all right, so you want to open up that pork tenderloin real good. And then I always create a little cavity on one side of it because I want to stuff this guy, okay? So what's better than garlic, right? I gotta have, this is in my kitchen at home. This is in my kitchen at school. We love the garlic. Everybody loves garlic. So you are going to be generous with that garlic. I'm going to say a good two and a half tablespoons. Like <laughs> you love you love garlic? I said I don't like garlic. Nancy doesn't like garlic. No. So she's gonna no. om <laughs> she gonna omit the garlic, but folks, I say go with the garlic. Just don't go to Nancy's house. <laughs> she, don't, she don't like garlic. No, don't. <laughs> so a good two and a half, maybe three tablespoons of some crushed garlic in there. And then we are gonna take some nice fresh baby spinach. Don't even have to chop that, okay? What I do is kind of just roll it up a little bit. And I'm going to stuff that little cavity in there. I've already pre-washed this. Make sure your spinach is good and washed because we've been having some problems with the greens around yeah. here lately. And you can never be too cautious. So wash all your fruit, right. your fruits and your Ooh. vegetables. Right? Right. right? 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 You kids, you don't even want to eat the lettuce anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, because it's infected. Wow. Yeah, with that chipotle. Yeah, they cleared that. But lettuce. we're not going to feed you infected lettuce. Come on, guys. No. <laughs> All right, and then I had my deli clerk slice me some real fresh provolone. This is a nice shot provolone, folks. That's what I like to use in this because that's going to bake in there, and you want that nice full shot flavor in there, okay? So what I do is I just give that a cut right down the center. Okay. What's so scary about a knife? <laughs> you just got to learn how to hold it. You watch me, kid. You, you'll be fine. I only cut myself about 10 times in my career. No! <laughs> just a joke. All right, and don't be picky here. I got about three or four slices. Just want to fill that cavity there. All right. And then that's about all there is to stuffing. Now, if you want to reinforce this with some meat twine, you can. But I don't bother doing that because mine just stays together because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll some nice ham on top of this guy. Now, normally I would want a nice thin prosciutto all on the top of this. And when I make this at home, that's what I do. But unfortunately, I forgot that at the market this morning. And our, luckily, our cafeteria has some nice smoked ham. So I'm going to use that on this today. You can use a nice smoked ham if you want, but the prosciutto yeah. on a holiday, really, you want to go ahead and do something really nice and go the extra mile. Prosciutto's a little expensive, but you, if you have your deli clerk, slice it really, really thin. All you're going to need is about seven good thin slices of it for this size of a tenderloin. And then you're going to just put it right on top here. All right, make 
make sure the whole tenderloin's covered. Don't be afraid. You can put a couple of extra slices if you want because it's a holiday. What do I say on the holidays? Don't skimp. No. Treat your guests right. They'll come back. Skimp if you don't want them to come back. Well. Some people don't want them to come back, so you might want to skimp, but no. Not me. All right, so folks, that is it for the prep on that. One other thing you're going to have to prep is your pan. Now, I have a two inch um, sheet here that I'm going to use. You, uh, use the disposable, guys. On Christmas, especially Christmas Eve, when you got 400 people coming to the house like I do, you don't want to do dishes. How big is your house? It's not that big. <laughs> no. They come in. They come in stages. You know, we got like 50 people come, then 20 people come. We got people in and out, open house all night long on Christmas Eve. So in the bottom of the pan, I've coarsely chopped one large onion, and I've done two limes because I love the taste of lime. A citrus is a beautiful flavor on pork. You can do lemon if you want, or orange. But I don't want to overdo this because we got a lot of nice smoked flavor going on, plus the smokiness of the cheese. So two limes, one large onion, and two sprigs of fresh rosemary. Love rosemary. That's wow. powerful. Yeah. It looks like a Christmas tree. It doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Doesn't it? It looks very Christmassy. Yeah. You smell that? Yeah. Folks, this is a wonderful herb to use around the holidays. It makes your house smell wonderful. So two sprigs of this is plenty because a little of that goes a long way. It's very strong, right? All right, and to this, you're gonna add two cups of white wine, which I ran out of back in my kitchen. And you're gonna add two cups of a nice chicken stock, okay? Because you wanna have some good juice in there. You're gonna be braising this for quite a while. Now, the key on this tenderloin I find when I roast this, when I, when I braise this guy, I don't want it sitting in all that juice. So this is, believe it yeah. or not, this is a cookie uh, cooling rack. Oh. And it fits, one, it fits perfectly in here. Now some people yeah. have the fancy racks yeah. where you can put in for the roasting pan yeah. and this and that. I don't have that. I probably should, but I don't have it. I use what I have. So folks, you could use what you have. Use a disposable pan. Use a nice cookie rack, but make sure you're keeping this tenderloin out of the juice. You don't want it sopping up all that juice. You want it just getting the steam from all of that going into that meat. That, that's what you really want. It's going to flavor the meat, but not overpower everything. Because what's in here in the tenderloin on its own is wonderful. Now, the only other thing that's left on this is I like to put a little cracked pepper. And you can go as much or as little as you want, <laughs> right? It depends how much cracked pepper you like. So I like a good, I don't know, tablespoon. And then just a little pinch of salt on that. And that's it. But this guy is going to go into an oven of 300 degrees for about three hours. You're going to take it out. Stick your meat thermometer in it. Once it reaches 165 degrees, it's done. Don't worry about it getting dark. You want a nice little crust to this guy because the inside of it is going to be so juicy and moist. It's going to be wonderful. And I just happen to have a finished product to look at. Haley, would you like to put this on the second shelf of that Am for me? You will not drop it, I promise you. <laughs> and then why don't you very carefully grab that because I got some juice in there. It's a magical oven. We have a magical kitchen yeah. over here in the studio. And this is our pork tenderloin. Wow, that looks good. It looks good. That is done. <laughs> it's stuffed. All the onions usually will caramelize and turn a mm. nice yellow color from the citrus and from the chicken mm. stock. And then use those onions. Don't use, you discard the lime and discard the uh, rosemary. And then so just use the onions. Put that on your plate and you've got a beautiful pork tenderloin dish for your holiday table. What do you think? I, you I, think you could handle that? Oh, yeah. I couldn't. Really? Not that was so easy. You don't think that was easy? I'd be very scared to do any of the cutting. Really? Yeah. Well, then how about you have your mom do the cutting? Yeah. Have Haley do have it. Have Haley do the cutting, and then you could stuff it. I'll do it. And you follow the easy, simple yeah. instructions. You roast it, right, for three hours. You don't even have to cover it. 
Boom, on low. On low. L Low and slow is the key to this recipe, guys. Low and slow. Now, my friend Haley, would you please put that underneath there for me? Because we're going to move right on to the next guy. I'm going to make that. Uh-oh. What do you mean, uh-oh? <laughs> well, you're the one scared of the knife, so I think I'm going to have you chopping some stuff for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks. All right, we've got a beautiful pork tenderloin done. What do we need? We need some side dishes to go with this. Do you think we need sides? Word. We need sides. Word. We need sides. <laughs> Don't know what that means, but word. Neither do I. All right. Something new. So I have chosen a couple of easy sides that are going to knock your guest's socks off. Easy for you because it's Christmas Eve. What do we do on Christmas Eve, right? We're still wrapping. Sometimes we're still shopping. It's crazy time. So we want to knock socks guests off. Well, I know I do because they come to me for what? Food. Okay. So I got to knock people's socks off. I can't give them chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's why I would like I give you, Like I give you guys. <laughs> I got to knock their socks off. So I need easy, quick recipes. <laughs> That guy, to me, was pretty simple yes. because the oven's doing the work. So now I need some easy sides to go with that. But I need some pretty stuff. It's a holiday. we got to make some nice, pretty things. So I chose, do you like sweet potatoes? All right. I bet you're going to like these sweet potatoes. All right, because we're going to make a sweet potato pancake. And not pancake, folks, like you think, like a pancake in the morning. It's going to be a little fried pancake, like a pancake, potato Cake, pancake. Yeah. Really yummy. So what I did was I started with two sweet potatoes, not too large. I, I took half of it out because my bowls are kind of small. So I'm going to cut this recipe down a little bit. And Haley, we're going to get this on because we need some heat here because we're going to fry up. All right? So we're going to get a medium heat. Let's get this down to medium. All right? Let that get a little warm. Now, my sweet potatoes, folks, I do a little something different to these. Now, I like to grate them. And I didn't have a grater in the kitchen, but I did have a beautiful food processor that grates for me. So we got this kind of like little stringy effect going on. Haley, you might give me a glove. I'm going to need a glove for that. I could use just one. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I grated and I ended up with some shredded potatoes, which is fine, you know. But we, really what you want to do is like give this a good hand grate. Take two potatoes. going to serve about six, seven people. You got to make quite a few potato patties with that. Um, and what I did was for one hour, I soaked them in a brine. So I made a brine myself, and not too much, and I soaked the potato in that. After you're done brining, you dump out the water, okay? And you wanna really, really dry these potatoes good. So they're kind of a salted sweet potato at this point. Did we all get that? Yes. All right. You can skip that step, but it really does the potato justice when you brine it a little bit. But make sure you are completely dry in that potato. Put it in some paper towel. Really wring it out good because you want a, a, a pretty much a dry potato here at this point. All right? So to this, very easily, you're going to chop for me. My friend Missy is going to chop. <laughs> She's going to chop about, what do we got here, two, three, six, about eight green onions, okay? And I want the greens of them because I want to make this really pretty. So we can go up to the stem. So what are you going to do? You're going to hold on to this. Hold on to your knife, okay? You're just going to chop like, like so. How do you do that so perfectly? Years of practice. All right. So try. I want you to try it. Come on. Hold on to it. Hold on to your, your, there you go. Keep your fingers away. Can you can. See that? You're doing it. They laugh at each other, folks. I don't know. They can't do it. They're laughing. Yo, that's perfect. Look at me. That's perfect. <laughs> My mom's going to be so proud. <laughs> Mommy, look at this. Your mother's going to have you chopping everything in the kitchen now. Don't say that. I'm not going to show it now. Yeah, you got it. That's perfect. Okay. All right, that's that's actually good enough. All right, Missy, you're a professional. <laughs> Missy's got this. 
So I'm just going to give it a little bit more on there. <laughs> no, you did it right. I just want it a little smaller. A like, little smaller, that's all. I'm not going to make you do that. But you did great. You did great. So we got the, the stems of the, the green onion are what's going to give this color, okay? So I want to put that right into my potatoes. And then I have grated a red onion, and I want to put mm, a couple of pinches of that in there. So go ahead. Pinches. A couple of pinches. Yeah. Boom. There's one pinch. And ba boom. There's two pinches. You don't want too much onion. Yeah. Uh, it's too much. Too much. Too much is too much, right? Yeah. And then of course we gotta we gotta bind this together a little bit. So we're gonna put a little flour in there. And we're going to put a little pepper for some flavor. We're going to put a little tiny bit of salt. And then we gotta, we got to get this to stick together. So we got to put some eggs in here, right? we got to get some eggs going on in this, this dish. Otherwise, we won't have a, pa a patty. We won't have a patty to work with. Do you know how to do this? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> she does. All right. I don't know if I need all of this, but I'm going to do. That looks good to me. Half of it looks good. And then you're just going to, folks, mix this around. You know, you can use the fork if you want. I like my hands. Everybody here knows that. I've done, uh, I think we figured it out. This is episode 24. That's what I think. I think too. we think this is ex the episode 24. So anybody that watches my show knows I use my hands for everything. After 24 episodes... I don't really use many utensils. Karen works with her hands. So, <laughs> it's just easier. It is. And I always wear a glove, so. So Haley, I heard along the way here that you were like the fry queen, that you know how to fry really well. Just what my mom's taught me. Just what your mom has taught you. So have you done pancakes before? All right, yes. so f folks, how simple is this? <laughs> Easy, I added egg, I added a little flour, I added a little salt and pepper to sweet potatoes with a little bit of onion, boom. That's boom. the recipe. This is it. There it is. All right, is. so what we're gonna do now, we got a nice, nice warm pan here. We get it on a medium heat. You're gonna add a little canola oil to that pan and everybody, anybody that knows me knows we add butter because it's, like, it's a holiday, we need butter. But put the canola oil in there. The, the canola oil, it, it could stand the heat a little bit more. We don't want the butter really burning. And the canola oil really just withstands the heat better. So make sure you're using a combo of the both because you don't want to ruin your potato pancake here. No, so don't. we're going to just take a little of that mixture and we're going to fry it right up in there. Now, Haley, the yes. most important thing here is to let that cook, okay? okay. So you don't want to be flipping this before it's really dark brown underneath because it's a potato. So you've got to cook a potato really well, otherwise you're going to be eating a hot potato. That doesn't make for a good time. Smells so, good doesn't that smell delish? Yeah. It smells good in the studio, guys. So I think we can fit, don't crowd the pan. And uh, we can fit about four of these in there. And I got about, I don't know, one, two, four, six, about seven people I got to feed after this show, so. <laughs> Because everybody hangs around and likes to eat afterwards. So that's <laughs> the best part of doing these shows is oh, the yes. food afterwards. You know, I get volunteers because they all like to eat. <laughs> all right, so Haley's going to watch these. I'm going to periodically check on them. They really need some good fry time. Uh, you know, I could tell you how long, but I don't, I've never really timed them before. I just know when they've got a good dark, dark crust on the bottom, then you're going to flip them same thing you got to get a good dot crust on both sides and then they're done so another easy recipe great side for the pork because the sweet potato and pork I think yeah. go really really well together and um, it took no time at all we're gonna top it after with some Parmesan cheese but we'll wait until later for that Haley yeah why don't we put some of this aside so I can we can work on the next dish because we're already moving along I mean, you know, when people tell me it's so hard to cook, it takes so long. I mean, I do these recipes, and we do like three or four every time. It doesn't even take us a half an hour. And we got a beautiful, beautiful meal for your beautiful family, and it's fun, and we've all worked together on it. So every, all you folks can do this. 
We can all do it. All right, so the next thing I want to do here is I like a salad with everything. Now, right now, and I picked the worst time in my life, I'm on a diet, and I'm counting calories. Why do you want a diet? Oh, Lord, we needed the diet. Okay. <laughs> so, and who goes on a diet at Christmas time? Yeah, no yeah, kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. crazy lunatic Karen. So, yeah, I got to have crazy. a salad at everything because I am counting calories. So I'm going to avoid all the cookies and the cakes this year. <laughs> it's very depressing to me because I love my cakes and cookies, but I'm going to avoid all of that. And I'm going to make a nice, beautiful salad to go along with this because, especially on open house on Christmas right. Eve, you got to have multiple things. I have multiple things in my house. Yeah. we got some potato pan. Haley, you're doing a great job. That Thank looks you. fantastic. <laughs> I don't even have to tell this girl anything. You're going to come and work in the kitchen with chef. me. She's a chef in the making. All right, so today's salad, I said I want to do something festive. I want to do some, some Christmas colors. And I chose a pear and pomegranate baby green gorgonzola salad with a homemade vinaigrette dressing. A lot of words there. That's a lot. That's a lot of words. All right, so folks, because we stuffed with the baby spinach, we're going to couple it up with a baby spinach salad. So to me, that only makes sense to have the same flavors going all through your meal. So I got about five cups of baby spinach here. Okay. To that, we're going to add two red pears. You can put any pear you like. I chose the red because the red and the green. Christmas. Christmassy. <coughs> so I cut two good-sized pears. Why don't you throw them right in that bowl, Nancy? And then pomegranate seeds, wonderful, loaded with ox antioxidants. These are great for you. And now, today, you can buy them. and You don't even have to pick them off the, when I was a kid, man, we used you to pick to, them oh, off yeah. that plant. And yeah. now they put them right in a cup for you. So you just go to the store, you buy your seeds. I'm going to put half of that into here. So because I'm saving the other half for me. I don't blame you. All right. That looks good to me. And then um, you can kind of pick any cheese you like. I think a nice gorgonzola works really well in this. Um, but if you're not a fan of blue cheese, this, this has a little blue cheese in it. The gorgonzola is a blue family. Um, you can definitely use feta if you are not a blue fan. But I like a nice gorgonzola in this salad. It just really brings out all the flavors of this and coupled up with the dressing that I've done. It really works well. So Nancy, about half of that. So you're looking at a good three quarters of a cup of the gorgonzola and three quarters of a cup of the pomegranate seeds in this for five cups of spinach and two large pears. That was a big chunk. Yeah, the big chunks are good. I would love that, Haley, because <coughs> you're just doing super. I'm very <laughs> proud of you, you know. Thank you. I think tomorrow you get something special from me. She comes and sees me every morning for breakfast, every day for lunch. <laughs> love these kids all right so this is it folks this is the salad it is done the only thing we got to do is dress it so um the dressing that i made here I, I, I had to do a little bit of a twist on it because i really wanted to do a champagne vinegar dressing and i forgot to bring my champagne vinegar in so it's a red wine vinaigrette today it's going to be red wine uh, vinegar olive oil um, some crushed garlic, salt and pepper, and a little squeeze of lemon juice. Very easy dressing. I use a really good quality olive oil because you're going to be eating this. So, uh, you know, an inexpensive olive oil to me just doesn't taste as good as something a little more high quality. When you're putting it right into your mouth, you know, if you're cooking with olive oil, it's a little different. You can get away with going a right. little inexpensive. But if you're going on a dressing, then splurge and get the good bottle of of olive oil and then really just dress this salad up nice. You got about two cups in there all together and then we're going to give that a toss. Oh. What do you think? Looks good. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. It's Christmassy. It looks great. It's going to taste really good. I can promise you that. And again, simple, simple dish. Folks, 
If that doesn't look like a plate of Christmas, I don't yeah. know what does. Would you eat something like that? Mm? Yeah. Yeah. You would. Yeah. See that, Haley? Would you, eat, would you eat that salad? Yeah. Yeah? I didn't think you were a big salad it fan. Looks. It's so beautiful. I love salad. I just, I don't know. It's Am I putting more butter and oil in this pan or no? I think for now, we're done, because we've okay. done four, so we got a nice, and it'll turn off once you take the pan off of it. <laughs> it's a I have magical equipment. Once you take the pan off, ba-boom, Just don't off. touch it yet. <laughs> All right, you so. this on there? I think you can put a little bit of Parmesan while they're hot, so that can melt a little bit in there. And this is, God, this is looking that delicious. That looks so good. This is looking like a good time. Haley, you did A1. All right, I think we're missing one thing, yeah. Nancy. Drink. Yeah, the drink. We're missing a drink. Yes. All right, so everybody knows I'm famous for the mocktail, right? I didn't do a dessert today on purpose because I don't want to eat the dessert. I could have done a dessert, but we had a lot going on. A lot. We had a lot. And everybody bakes. People come to your holiday. They're bringing the cookies. They're bringing the cakes. Nobody makes food. They bring treats. So I said, we don't need a dessert today, but we need a mocktail. Yeah, we do. We need a mocktail. Yeah, All right. Simple, simple, simple mocktail. It's a cranberry, sparkling, rosé, pomegranate, Christmas mocktail. Can you say that fast? You probably can't even, <laughs> you probably can't even repeat it. <laughs> All right. So easy, 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 folks. Start with a pitcher. Half full of ice. I've already put down, cut a lime, you know, just wedged it up. I threw a lime in there, squeezed it a little bit so you got a little lime juice in there. Nancy, I've already opened up the bottles. You want to start with cranberry pomegranate juice. Mm -hmm. All right, so in your pitcher, go not quite a half of the way. We've got three ingredients going in here. That look good? A mm, little more. Perfect. Okay. All right. Cover Same the ice. with cranberry. Again, easy, easy, peasy. easy. Easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. Lime. Good. <laughs> okay. oh. That looks good. Okay. And then the rest of the way, you're going to top with, I found this today. I just thought it was the most fantastic thing. Usually I do a ginger ale. But this is a sparkling rosé grape juice cocktail. I thought that was Fancy. awesome. Fancy, holiday, it looks like Christmas. Yes. We're going to make it fizzy in there, and it's going to be fabuloso. Look at that. Haley, if you look underneath there, I got a spoon, so we're going to give this a swirl. This yeah. spoon? Yep. Nancy's going to give that a spin. We're going to pour some drinks, Nancy. Okay. Maybe a couple for now. Sure. Folks, that's it. That's as easy as that mocktail gets. Now, if you would prefer, you could always put a little, um, you know, spirit in there. You could use a little white wine instead of the sparkling grape. You could use a little vodka if you want to really kick it up a notch. We're not going to do that here in school today because mm. it's against the rules for definite. I've made some little garnish. Nancy, <laughs> show, the, show well. those garnish to the folks at home. I've done a little lemon, uh, lime wedge with a grape. You can fancy up your glasses any way you like, but I always say make it a little pretty for your guests and garnish up the glass, and they'll love it and it's special, and the holidays are all about special times, being with special people. This is my special group today. I love these kids. I love Nancy, she's my favorite. Everybody knows that. And from my holiday table to yours, I hope you enjoyed these recipes. I hope you use these recipes. Hold on to your loved ones, folks, and have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you back in January for some New Year's tips. Merry Christmas.